Numerous people have asked, where do you start when creating a game's narrative? Great question, and one which many professionals struggle with. We can't even remotely claim to have a definitive answer for this one, but here's our general thoughts and how James usually goes about it. First, don't start with a story. All the time, I run into young designers who've got a great story in mind that they want to build their game around. This is going to lead you into a world of hurt. Having a story already built tends to box you in in a number of ways. First, it limits what your mechanics can be. You'll have all these ideas about the actions your characters should be able to take, how they should interact, and what they should be able to do, and that'll just kill you right off the bat. You'll build out these things and try to make them work, but no set of mechanics springs fully formed from the designer's head. Instead, you're going to end up with a lot of bloat that you'll try and kludge and kick and squeeze into some shape that's acceptable to your players, and that rarely comes together in a tight, coherent way. Having your story planned from the outset will keep you from abandoning ideas entirely, or cutting them down to the few that are really working. Rather than just delivering the very best mechanics, you'll deliver all sorts of things that'll drag the rest of your experience down. It's just dooming yourself to failure. No one's going to care about your story because it's not being delivered in an engaging way. Another reason why starting with a story is bad? Because doing so locks yourself into a specific set of characters and places. Maybe those characters and places won't match your art team's area of expertise. Maybe the players won't find them engaging or interesting. Who knows how well those characters and places will read on screen? And who knows how expensive they might be to build? Most importantly, who knows how malleable these characters and places are? Your game's inevitably going to go through some big changes in development. Every game does. Will your story elements be able to adapt to fit those changes without breaking the entire plan? Lastly, starting with your story locks you into an emphasis on plot and a certain amount of exposition. As a general rule, I wouldn't ever say, we're going to tell this story before you at least have a prototype of your game up and playable, because it's amazingly easy to put more words on paper than you're ever going to be able to deliver in play. You'll find that doing so either leads to this unwillingness to let go, which means your story's gonna bog down, or that you're forced to cut large chunks from your story later in development, leaving your original idea full of holes, hastily patched sections, and disjointed chunks. In fact, this is probably one of the main reasons so many game stories feel as discombobulated and disconnected as they do. And this all combines to push you toward a totally unreasonable scope. It tends to be much, much easier to write a scene than to actually be able to create all the assets required to deliver that scene in the game. All the art, the animations, the sound, and the mechanics, both in terms of programming and design. I've seen this bloated scope that comes from starting with a story destroy more than one team. What I see many designers fail to realize is that 99% of the time, you can tell all the important parts of your story in many different settings. All the things that matter are fungible, mutable, able to take many forms. In fact, that's often how you can tell what's really at the heart of your story, by looking at the things that would work just as well with different characters, a different setting, with all of the proper nouns replaced entirely. I mean, think about Romeo and Juliet. That story would work just as well in a space empire of the distant future as in Renaissance Italy. It could be set in Rome. It could have anthropomorphic dogs. Its main characters could be named Rupert and Periwinkle. It could be a book, a game, a movie, a play, a song, an opera. I mean, that story worked with dance-fighting 1950s greaser gangs. The same is true of any story you come up with for a game. So, how does this work in practice? Well, let's say James is going to make a game. He would start his narrative simply by trying to understand what emotion or idea he wanted to explore with the game. Then, he would work with his team to find really compelling mechanics that in some way help explore that idea or convey that emotion. Once they've got that, then he starts really asking himself, what story do these mechanics tell? What do they mean? What do they say inherently in and of themselves? From there, they build out the barest bones of a traditional story and try to put together a level or a few minutes of play that embodies everything they're looking for. And like any first level you build as a team, they expect to have to totally refactor or simply abandon that level in the long run, but it helps them to hone in on what they're looking for. It helps them to understand the story the game can tell, rather than trying to impose a story from on high. And perhaps most importantly, it helps them to understand how they're delivering their story, so they know the cost in terms of production for doing so, which in turn tells them exactly how much tale they can really afford to tell. So however you do it, in the end, if you just start with the things that really matter, the emotion at the core of your work, the idea you hope to explore, you'll be able to deliver a much better story in a game than if you'd simply started with the story first. I know it's not what a lot of people want to hear, but believe me, it'll save you from a ton of pain in the end. Good luck, we'll see you next week.